Hi folks, welcome to episode 34 of Epochs, where I'm joined by Bo, and we're going to be having a very festive look at Saturnalia, which is of course what we call now Christmas. Um, right, so as I understand it, and I'm no great expert on Saturnalia, but this was a Roman holiday in midwinter, uh, in which uh, they had kind of a general festive cheer and an inversion of the social structures of the time. Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, uh, some people say it's very trite to say that Saturnalia is like a Roman Christmas. It's not really at all. It just happens about the same time. Yeah. And the Christian versions of that have pick, picked a couple of bits and bobs from it. Yeah. But um, yeah, so to call it sort of the Roman Christmas, you, you can do it, but it's, it it's a completely day? different thing. No, so that's the thing. Right. It's not a single day. Right. right. Um, so first of all, one of the first things I'd like to say about it is that just a gen a Roman holidays in general mm. are quite different. So they didn't have a weekend as we did. As we do, sorry, rather. Uh, you work every <laughs> yeah, single <dude>. day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if the EU are going to do away with, <laughs> yeah, 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 with well. weekends. Um, but yeah, they didn't have weekends as such. Uh, but what they did have is loads and loads of uh, holiday days. Yeah. Loads throughout the year. Yeah. Uh, depending on how generous the, the, the Senate and the Emperor will want to be. Sometimes 200 days of the year are, are holiday days. Yeah. See, so it's I, quite I, odd to I look at their calendar. I recall watching a documentary a while ago that, that pointed out that Romans didn't work every day anyway. <laughs> and like they, they were, you know, we're, we're used to the sort of, you know, nine to five, Monday to Friday. And the Romans just didn't do that at all. And it was really bizarre watching it. So they might work three or four days a week just randomly throughout the week. And that just strikes me as a bizarre and uncoordinated uh, way of having society. Um, but I didn't realise it was up to 200. Yeah, sometimes. Every year's different. There'll be like a, a few that are sort of state-mandated, for want of a better word, right. uh, four or five of yeah. them a year, a year. Like the Lupercania is probably the most famous one. Like young men dress up as wolves and there's sort of a sexual undertone to that one. But the Saturnalia is probably Lupercania and Saturnalia are the two biggest ones. Right. Uh, but So there'll be four or five or six sort of ones every single year at different points. Uh, but then loads of other ones sprinkled in. So the emperor might just have a triumph or something. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. And it's seldom one day. Hmm. So the Saturnalia at its height is uh, a week long. Oh, okay. Um, and it usually started on the 17th of December. Right. So that's sort of what you look at. And sometimes some festivals could go on for a couple of weeks even. Um, it was rare that it would be just for one day. Um, but the other thing is that Saturnalia lasted for so long. I mean, the first accounts seem to be sort of fourth, third, third fourth century BC. Hmm. And it goes through right through to sort of fourth century AD. Right, so it's and, a really old tradition. Yeah. And as you can imagine, it wouldn't have been celebrated in exactly the same way over all those centuries. Just like we don't, mm -hmm. we don't celebrate Christmas as exactly as they did in the 1600s today, no, do we? Course, it yeah. changes and morphs over time, yeah. as did the Saturnalia. However, um, there are certain elements that remained constant throughout it. Right, okay. So first of all, Saturnalia is uh, sort of the festival of Saturn. Mm -hmm. um, and so Saturn is sort of the Romanized version of Kronos. Mm. Kronos and Saturn are sort of the same thing. And they're sort of considered um, sort of much more the, the senior pantheon of gods. Yes. Um, so right away, there's something to say about polytheism as opposed to monotheism. Mm. Um, because we're used to, in the West at least, um, really quite strict monotheistic traditions we grow up in, don't we? That yes. You know, there's, there's one God. He had one son mm. who spoke the word, one word, one book, one Bible, <laughs> you know, which is exactly the same in, in Judaism and Islam as well. Yeah. It's sort of very much the oneness of things. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so in polytheistic uh, traditions, it's, it's very, very different. You, you know, you yeah, might have crazy some... stories like Cronus eating his own children and, and vomiting them back up and things like this. And it's like, okay, what? Maybe it is just simpler to have one God, <laughs> you know? <laughs> But like in the Hinduism, for example, you have sort of the senior ones. Or if I think of sort of the Greek gods, you know, mm. you've got Zeus and Hera and Apollo and Athena. And they're, they're the senior ones that everyone's supposed to respect. Mm. But then there, there's all sorts of other, uh, lots minor. of dozens and dozens of mm. minor deities mm. that you can pick and choose from. For example, you, your household, your particular household might be a big fan or devotee or whatever of the, the god of the hearth, say. Some random I, thing. I, I, next I, door, I, don't care about that. But I, I in your like, household. No, you know, no, no. I like the framing of these as fandoms. <laughs> this is really interesting, actually. I think that's a really interesting framing uh, because that's how, genuinely how it feels. I mean, you, I, I went to Athens and you, you know, visit the Temple of Asclepius or whatever. It's like, okay, so he's a god of medicine. Well, I mean, I guess you'd have particular care for him if you were sick. You know, you right. you would want that. But yeah. if you're not sick, then you know, if your if your family had 
traditionally produced people who join the army, you might have a shrine of Ares or something, wouldn't you? You know, yeah, and yeah. it's and it really is kind of like fandoms. You know, it's like what are you into rather than <laughs> like. Yeah. You know, everyone's got the same nativity display or anything like that. It's it's fascinating. Yeah, you can pick and choose, a bit of yeah. a, a pick and mix yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> Which one's your favourite? <laughs> um, yeah, so for example, you know, like people, uh, like the, the Krishna people, some Hindus are sort of Krishna mm. devotees. Yeah. And the next house over don't care about Krishna particularly. Mm. But just as an example. And it doesn't um, matter, you know. Matter. Yeah, it's sort of up to you as long as you're, um, as, as long as you aren't rude to sort of the most famous, biggest, most powerful deities. Well, yeah, of course. Um, so in the Roman world, Saturn was one of the most senior ones. Mm. Um, yeah, and so in the Forum, the Roman Forum, there was one of the biggest buildings there was a giant temple to Saturn. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, it's really quite important. And, and, and Saturn sort of, as most of the most important gods, sort of represent more than one thing. Mm. Um, but he was sort of known for um, harvest and agriculture and uh, the concept of rebirth um uh, and also sort of the a, a golden age all golden ages are sort of associated with with saturn or chronos mm. as well as sort of wealth and and liberation mm. um and so when we get into the details of saturn Ali, you'll see that sort of liberation and rebirth and also sort of harvest time and things all it all plays into it mm. even though it's the middle of december um uh, but yeah, once again, just to stress, it would have been treated a little bit differently at different periods. Yeah, but I, I, it does make sense to for it to be in the middle of winter as well, because that's you know the the sort of cycle of it going down and then coming back up, isn't it? You know, so yeah, like the rebirth of the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as the days get shorter, and uh, yeah, the days get shorter and shorter as you yeah. reach uh, winter equinox. Yeah. And this, but it's like the sun is dying. Yeah, it's yeah. increasingly dying. Yeah. And then after winter solstice, it's it's the rebirth yeah, yeah, of yeah. the sun itself. Yeah, so it, it actually um, does make sense. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and so, uh, but as you, as you as you know, the twenty fifth of December, our Christmas, and the seventeenth of December, neither of those are actually the the solstice. Mm. It's like the twenty second, twenty first, twenty second of December. Uh, but again, we get into a bit bit murky because it's to do with calendars. We, yeah, they well, don't I, have I, exactly the same calendar as we do. Yeah, I was going to say. Uh, now, is it is it the just that the calendars have changed that position on the date? You know, because I mean, like you know, the, these things have changed a huge amount in the last two thousand years. Yeah, yeah. So we're on the Gregorian calendar. Mm. Um, after one of the, the the medieval popes, one of the Gregories, the Julian calendar? which is based, it's almost yeah. identical, yeah. Um, or it's very similar to the the Julian calendar, which was instituted by Julius Caesar yeah. uh, when he was Pontifex Maximus. Um, and so, for example, the Eastern Orthodox Church have got a slightly different calendar to us because the the Gregorian calendar is in the Catholic. Mm -hmm. tradition and well they're not catholic and so it's a little bit different that's why sometimes when you look at the r dates in russian history yeah they're a little bit different because they're on the, the 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 russian orthodox calendar yeah um and so yeah this idea of the, the 25th of december it only really applies to the the gregor or the julian and gregorian calendars and it kind of drives me mad as well because december means the 10th month it's the 12th month mm. how did that happen well, okay, because in the Roman times, in sort of <laughs> classical Roman the times, they month, only yeah. had 10 months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They only had 10 yeah. months. October. Um, and it's the it was... month, but it's called the eighth month. <laughs> this is driving me crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Um, well, it's interesting, actually. Well, some people probably find it very dull, but I think it's kind of interesting. The way Julius Caesar yeah. uh, reformed and adapted the sort of classical Roman calendar, and some things were kept, and some names were kept, like he added in yeah. July, that's after yeah. Julius Caesar. And August. And after Augustus, after Augustus yeah. yeah. So it kept getting tinkered with, and yeah. it's only really sort of uh, constituted, written in stone in the, in the Middle Ages, actually. But isn't that wild? So, yeah, I'm just going to invent a new month. <laughs> hey, what are you going to call it? July. <laughs> Okay, Julius. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as, as you say. Yeah, we have, talk about having a bit of a, a shilling on yourself. I know. It's a bit of an ego. It's mad, <laughs> isn't it? Well, just while we talk about that, just to, just pop into my mind the yeah. way the French revolutionaries wanted to change the calendar. Oh, well, they wanted just 10 months again, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. So Year it can zero. totally be done. It can be done. You can reorganise the calendar. Yeah. Um, but, the, you know, we're left with the 25th. And just to say on that, we don't know exactly exactly why the Christians of the 5th century chose the 25th because obviously we can't be sure mm. of when Jesus of Nazareth, if he's even real, we can't be sure exactly when he was born. We well, don't know. So I'm, they sort of had to pick a date out of, you know. I mean, there, there's been a lot of discussion about this and it's like shepherds watch their flocks by night. What, in the middle of winter? <laughs> maybe, you know, maybe he was, you know, but the, it doesn't matter. But like the, the yeah, the, the point is um, 
we don't know why the 25th. Mm, mm. No reason. Well, they had all sorts of like ecclesiastical councils mm. um, uh, where they decided things like what should be yeah. canon, like should the letters of Paul be part of the Bible yeah. or something. And when is Easter? When are we going to have Easter? And, and when are we going to have Christmas is one of them. When was the birth of Christ exactly? And they couldn't really, uh, despite some important minds being set to it, they couldn't decide, they couldn't work it out exactly. So anyway, they chose the 25th and we're right. not exactly sure. But uh, part of that, again, I'm just going to save some of this more for the end, but a big part of that is that they're trying to co-opt existing traditions. Yeah, I've, so I've, I've heard that that's the case. Is, is there substance to this? Yeah, it seems to be. Okay. Because there's all sorts of pagan or non-Christian hmm. traditions Oh, well, the Saturnalia. Yeah, yeah. Um, they were sort of trying to co-opt the Saturnalia. And we'll, mm. we'll see all sorts of uh, uh, parallels, all sorts of different things that were taken and taken from the, directly from the Saturnalia, which right, aren't okay. Christian at all. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, maybe we could just jump straight into it yeah, then. So it. one of the things they had was um, a big temple to Saturn mm -hmm. and uh, a, a big statue of Saturn in the temple of Saturn, yeah. um, which uh, some said was... Uh, could possibly have been hollow and filled with um, olive oil. Got, got no more detail for you on that, but that could, <laughs> that could, have, that could be the case. Um, it's making and, a big statue uh, of Saturn, yeah. And we'll make it hollow. Why? So we can fill it with olive oil. Why? <laughs> uh, no good reason. Just uh, <laughs> I just think Saturn would like it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 well, that's the thing with all sorts of traditions, not yeah. just Christmassy ones, but why that? Yeah. And we don't know, it's just lost. Like, yeah. for example, this statue's feet were apparently um, all year round were covered in some sort of wrapping or twining mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. But during Saturnalia, they took that off. The, the priests uh, took that off the, the feet of the statue of Saturn. And then when Saturnalia finished, they rewrapped it again. Yeah. And that's how it stayed all year round. And there was a smaller statue, a wooden one of Saturn, which yeah. lived in the temple right. all year round, apart from Saturnalia, where the priest... The priests would take this statue because quite often, you know, that's a that's a long, well, well known tradition, isn't it, to have sort of an idol, yeah. to have a physical representation of the god, which you sort of treat as the god yeah. in a way. That's very, very ancient. Mm. So they had that um, a, a, one of Saturn, and the, temp the the priests would take the smaller statue and take it somewhere else in the forum, so not very far. Yeah, um, and there would be a procession behind it, yeah. um, and it would be sort of uh, set up on a couch. And again, they would wrap it with certain things, wrap it in twine and things. Right, I don't okay. really know why. Well, I'm not sure why. Well, I mean, this, um, this is a fairly ancient tradition of uh, doing things with statues, though, in the, oh, yeah, in the yeah. ancient world. I mean, they used to have like, religious processions with statues all the time. And it's like, okay, let's have fun. You know, Glad you're having a good time. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm enjoy. Sure the God, I'm sure the God's <laughs> impressed. <laughs> you know? Well, so that was, well, you've hit the nail on the head exactly that. It's, yeah. to, um, it's to impress the God. Yeah. Or to show that you have respect or even love for him. Yeah, devotion. And you sacrificed in his name. Mm. And the, the sacrifice for Saturn on Saturnalia was bulls. They'd Ooh. always sat, uh, uh, sacrifice. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. And as Rome got more, more and more wealthy, mm. more and more powerful, um, the, 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 the train of bulls that they would <laughs> sacrifice in the forum for Saturnalia became bigger and bigger, more and more elaborate. And uh, apparently lots and lots of the, the citizenry of Rome would all go there and feast in the forum yeah. uh, when they sacrificed bulls. Because that's the thing, like people think, oh, they're sacrificing an animal. It's like, well, I mean, yes, but they are eating it afterwards. Yes. So it's in not like case, they're wasting it, you know, they're not just like murdering it for no reason. They're yeah. cooking it, you know, but it's a ritualistic uh, yeah. meal that they're going to have in the honour of the god. So it's, it's not like, because it sounds like a terrible waste until you realise they sit down and cook it. Mm. Right, okay, well then fair enough. It's not that big a deal, is it? Mm. But um, mm. yeah. yeah, and there's a long tradition of that sort of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so sometimes but in sort of the, when Rome was extremely affluent and powerful, so mm. like first, second century AD or something, there'd just be lots and lots of, and they're all the best, biggest bulls that they mm. could get their, their hands on at the time. Um, and yeah, just great feasting and lots and lots of drinking. I mean, revelry, really, mm. sort of drunken silliness. Mm. Um, was sort of, so over the millennia, <laughs> Christmas has gone through, whatever you want to call it as Christmas, yeah. has gone through various phases of being really serious and austere mm. and then just silly drunkenness. Yeah, now we um, sacrifice turkeys. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and so Saturnalia was certainly in that more sort of ribald tradition mm. um, and not particularly serious. It wasn't supposed to be taken really sort of seriously. Very you know? different to the uh, sort of Victorian Christmases, mm. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. 
where they're sort of yeah. quite austere, quite straight-laced yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, and the idea that it's sort of, because our modern Christmas is very much based around the child's experience, isn't it? Having mm. presents and things, and a lot of it is sort of all in aid of children mm. now. Um, that's quite that's quite modern. Mm. Um, Christmas and certainly Saturnalia was not really child-friendly. <laughs> <laughs> it was about, um, yeah, being yeah. being drunk quite a lot and gambling <laughs> for some reason. Saturnalia was heavily associated with gambling. Oh yeah, right. And we don't really have that at our Christmas, do we? It's not really anything. We're not, not really, really an big element gambling of gambling culture, though. Are no, we? Yeah. You know, we kind of think gambling's a bit wrong, but the Romans used to gamble all the time, didn't they? Yeah, dice. Mm. Dice was the big one. All sorts of mm. uh, Roman accounts always talk about playing dice, dice and, yeah. and, and um, gambling on dice. Uh, and part of the thing was that if you didn't really have money. You just, you know, like when you have a, a game of cards and you want to yeah. bet on it, but no one really wants to lose or win any money. So you just make up little counters or matchsticks yeah. or, or whatever. Pennies or something. Yeah. Uh, so they would do that with uh, nuts, apparently, right, small right. nuts, and everyone would be gambling on dice. And uh, and so apparently one of the refrains was that, oh, I can't wait, can't wait for Saturnalia and, and, and gambling with nuts. And they would hmm. talk about that apparently that all year round, people would be looking forward to Saturnalia and playing games where they're gambling with nuts. Okay. Uh, so that was a big thing. Oh, and the other thing, um, they would shout, Yo Saturnalia, or I O, I think it's pronounced Yo, Yo Saturnalia. Everyone, it's just like saying Merry Christmas. Mm. But you just sort of shout at each other all the time to strangers and stuff. Oh, that's nice. And there's accounts of people that were sort of not really into the spirit or didn't really care about <laughs> it, just being really annoyed that outside their windows they can just hear drunkards screaming, Yo Saturnalia, all night. And it just annoyed them. Nothing new under the sun, <laughs> you know, <laughs> drunk people come from the pub, Merry Christmas, shut up. <laughs> uh, one of the other things was that you would wear uh, hats. Oh. Um, yeah. But they would be, um, well, in Rome, one of the things is that if you were uh, a slave, quite often you'd have a shaved head. Mm. Or if you were newly emancipated from being a slave, you would shave your head. Mm. Uh, a full citizen wouldn't really ever shave their head. Um that wasn't sort of done. Mm. Um, and But there's a sort of a class in between full citizens and slaves, freedmen. You know, you're certainly not mm -hmm. a slave, but, but you're not the full citizen yet. Mm. They would quite often wear sort of red hats, red caps. Um, they look a little bit like, um, again, in the French Revolution, you know, sort of those revolutionary red sort of felt yeah, caps. Yeah, look yeah. a bit like that. Right. Um, and that was sort of, not always, but sort of associated with what freedmen would wear. Right. And so... Uh, one of the things is that nearly everyone would wear these red caps. So it's sort of it's sort of um, disappearing the line between a slave and a citizen. Mm. You know, that uh, sort yeah, of yeah. idea. Temporarily for this period of time. Yeah. yeah. And so that gets us on to sort of one of the main or one, perhaps one of the most famous things people know about Saturnalia um, is this role reversal thing they, yeah. they did, they had, where uh, during Saturnalia um, – the, the most extreme versions are that the slaves, the, the owners uh, waited on the slaves. Mm. Um, a, a lot of accounts seem so to that's say... That's what I've heard. Yeah. But that's sort of an extreme version of it. Right. I think what's much more likely is that um, uh, the, the slaves were allowed to be a bit more informal with their masters. Mm. Or that they would still cook the food, but the masters would uh, serve it at least. Mm. Mm. Uh, and so what it seems like actually... Is just like with uh, Christmas nowadays, different households, different families are more or less into it, right? Mm. You know, you've got one yeah, house yeah, on yeah. the street where their whole garden and oh, the front yeah. house is just filled with lights, oh, yeah. and there's another house where they don't, they're not really yeah. doing anything for it at all, more or less. Yeah. Um, um, so it'll be the same with that. Some households, or there's one account, I can't remember whether it was Cicero or someone, they said, oh, well, I'll serve them. Uh, on one particular day, but not nothing beyond that, yeah. and I won't allow them to be insolent towards me. Right. And then other other houses where they really sort of lent into it. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com. <laughs>